Ooh, we're well into mushroom season, but many are seemingly quite doggy and are passing over quickly. It's time to forage for photos again, but will I find any worthy specimens? Oh, and please remember to use a lens cloth. Now, although I've come out today with the aim of shooting mushrooms, I'm not going to ignore other obvious compositions that, yeah, kind of stare you in the face. Or rather, this one didn't stare me in the face because I walked up that trail there. Uh, and I've banged on about this before. It's only because I turned around and looked where I'd come that I saw this very obvious composition. Uh, now, I've already captured uh, a shot or two with this. And uh, one of the problems I have today, I say problems, I mean, it's not really a problem. It's uh, yeah, just changing light. Uh, because up there is a reasonable amount of cloud and there's every now and again a breeze and the sun is straight up there. And every now and again we get the light just comes streaming through and provides some nice uh, kind of patination uh, on the, uh, the bracken th uh, through there and the, the path itself and also the, t the subject tree down here. You might be able to see there's a little bit of light coming back through on this bracken down here. What I need to do is I need to get the tree and the path. The path leads directly to the tree and it's a nice shot. I don't know whether we're gonna get another opportunity on it or, or what, but I'm hand holding it and have hand held it because I didn't want to, well, I'll be honest, I didn't want to lose the light uh, because it was there and I knew that it might not be there and it isn't there now. So I didn't want the faff of the, the tripod. And of course there's all of the, the bracken here which means everything's really soft so you can't rely on it easily for um, yeah, solidity, should we say, stability. So I just uh, shot um, handheld here. I've got to be careful of this leaf and, and it's and its friends in front of it. But this is, this appears to be the optimum kind of position. There's a bit of light coming through again now. Not, not as much as there was earlier. I was worried about using the overly cinematic music for this, but on reflection, I think this is a wonderful shot. Even if I do say so myself, it doesn't happen often. If you want to see this hanging on your wall, drop me an email. So of course I would caution against doing too much woodland photography handheld. Uh, there's a great deal of freedom in uh, hand holding, of course, and uh, I would suggest probably trying to find your location, your position, your camera position whilst handheld is a good idea. But that final shot handheld is less of a good idea for many because in a busy space like this, an inch or so's movement or less could mean that you've got something out of position could mean that your composition is muddy, it is confused by the position of a tree trunk or the position of a branch or even leaves and it does make things rather more challenging. Woodland photography handheld has its place for sure but I would certainly recommend one of these in most cases. I'm going between the main paths uh, of the woodland on lesser trodden routes. I'm pleased I have because obviously the the normal paths have the normal scenes. That sounds entirely wrong doesn't it but what I mean is that well you need to get off the beaten track don't you and uh, I, uh, I've just come across one of those and uh, yeah a slightly kind of downtrodden track here and I found a very very nice uh, a couple of scenes of mushrooms. Now I think shooting these is going to be slightly challenging. There's so much detail to be had that I can't possibly isolate any of these. 
I, I, really, I don't think I'd want to. They, they're so nice in their environment. I think it's their environment that's the, the, the key interest here. It, it's the, the number of them and the environment that's the, 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 the attraction. So we've got to get the fact that we've got the stump here. Uh, we've got to look at the, capturing some of the fern because the fern's part of the environment. There's this sweet chestnut case there, which I think is very nice as well. Whilst a lot of photography is about subtraction, taking things out of the shot to remove the confusion and clutter, I, I think this one, I've got to keep things in the shot to be very mindful of showing the whole story of this. Right, I'm gonna work with that. Get the tripod out and uh, get down here and uh, see what we can get. I think these things, these things are uh, invaluable. Save your knees, a little bit of softness underneath you. Save your clothing from getting mucky on the woodland floor. Uh, it's really a sit pad, but I tend to use it more for kneeling. If you haven't got one, there are only a few quid. I'll leave a link in the description uh, for something suitable. I would seriously recommend the purchase of one if you're going to go out and do some outdoor photography particularly in the winter or wet days and such because uh, it will save your bum from getting wet none of us want a wet bum often I'd try to focus stack a shot like this um, just to make sure I get the kind of bokeh depth or the, the soft depth if you like to just keep certain things in focus but here I don't necessarily think that's quite what I want to do. I think I want to get the whole thing in shot. So I'm, I've increased the ISO to, well, I'm at 500 here. I'll get away easily with 800. Not that it makes a great deal of difference here, I think. There's next to no movement in the shot. Just place a leaf in here. Maybe two leaves. <laughs> That works better. Somewhere in there, there's a good little shot. I'm gonna stack it together, do whatever I need to, and uh, I'm gonna put it up on screen now. And I'm hoping you're gonna make a comment and tell me what you think of it. My glasses are just slipping down. Mm. Mm. So I've set up another shot here from the other clump. So the other clump's just there. This one, I'm gonna attack them very differently. I've done a little bit of dressing of the scene, uh, i.e. I've removed a bit of clutter uh, that I didn't want. And I ended up with a foreground that was just really these, uh, th these pine le needles. Um, and as much as I'm not gonna put any focus on the foreground they didn't kind of blur and soften up enough to take the eye really to the subject so I've put a couple of fallen leaves down and uh, a sweet chestnut case and I am going to focus stack this one now you see it's a really convoluted uh, setup for the tripod here it's a bit wobbly and because it's a bit wobbly, I'm going to use a cable release or a remote release on this. So the thing that I have with uh, focus stacking on this camera uh, is uh, I have the main viewfinder and then I have a, a, a line, a box inside that viewfinder, uh, which is the final image. So anything that appears outside of that black line box won't be in the final image. So it does mean that when I switch uh, the focus stacking on, I have to uh, bear that in mind and Re possibly zoom in, zoom out a little bit to still get the image that I had preconceived or prearranged or precomposed. Needs a little bit more adjustment, so I'll just move that. That leaf's got quite a nice kind of curl on it. Now, this for me is going to take a little bit of uh, adjustment still uh, because I need to uh, 
ensure that the focus point of the camera remains right at the very tip of the mushroom there. Now I'd like to think I know these woods reasonably well, but today I think I've come to the conclusion I really don't know them at all. Over the last few years I've got a number of different shots here and I suppose for in one way or another you could say I've kind of cut my teeth for in woodland photography here. I'm not claiming for one second that I'm good at it uh, because it's an incredibly difficult genre to, uh, to master. But you'll never master it unless you get on and, and visit these places. But whilst I've been here and I've spent many days here over the, uh, over the last few years, today I've realised I just do not know them terribly well at all. Uh, I tend to kind of stick to the same paths and go to the same areas. And today I thought, well, I don't have a, a schedule. I haven't got to be anywhere later. I'm going to come off of the paths that I might normally walk through and uh, come across um, things that I maybe haven't seen before. And I mean, you can see around me here that this is really all plantation. Yeah, it's just pretty straight up and straight down. And further over there, we've got a um, kind of younger collection of pine trees. But there's a path running through here. And I feel sure that I've walked the path before. But I haven't seen the trees that are here before. And I think this is an important point that really does need making. I've got a tree right here that I've never seen from this angle. Because if I had have seen it from this angle, I would have said, wow, I've got to shoot that, and I never have. In actual fact, just straight ahead of me over here, there's a, a, a kind of twisted oak type looking tree that looks very sculptural and, uh, and structural. It's a great looking tree, and again, I've never seen it from that angle. If I've only just walked up and down the path here, I haven't seen these trees properly. Whilst I don't think there's a shot here at the moment, or, or even over there, there, yeah, if I can find a route through, maybe. The, the, uh, these, these are a couple of trees to kind of put in the bank. I need to do a shot with the, the phone as well. So I've just turned location tags on, so now this will keep a GPS setting of this tree, which uh, is an important thing because I mean, I'll head like a sieve. The point I'm making is keep revisiting the same places. Uh, because this is a vast area and uh, yeah, just covering the whole thing in even kind of two or three days of uh, almost relentless kind of wandering around, I don't think you'd do it. I think it needs to be many, many visits and uh, that's the takeaway. That's the takeaway. Keep coming back. I think it's fair to say that I've got quite engrossed in this little clump of mushrooms here. Well, you've got to see the position of the camera really to uh, uh, to appreciate this. So yeah, I've tried a number of different uh, um, exposures and a bit of uh, light painting with it and uh, yeah, kind of glowing mushrooms thing. It's the first time I've ever tried it. Do not know whether I've pulled it off. I almost certainly haven't. Uh, need some more practice. Um, but uh, there'll be a shot out of that, again uh, working with uh, the, uh, uh, the cable release on there because, um, well, everything's just not that steady. I think I'll be able to process that into a really, really nice little shot. I managed to get myself kind of semi lost in the woods. Sometimes that might be a bad thing, but this time it wasn't. I ended up kind of doing some circular routes without realising it, and I thought, oh, I've been here before. So instead of walking back the way I came, I thought, oh, I'll come off, off piste again. And uh, hell, 
what a what a chance uh, that was because I mean li literally you know if I if I turn around the the path I was walking down is literally just at the bottom here and I've walked up I've, I've walked up here before but I can't remember where it goes but anyway waffle over just look at these that thing's the size of a dinner plate and there's more in here but I don't just oh this is lovely anyway no I've got you see I, I've got the camera down low again and I've got a really nice little composition on it and there's a little bit of light picking up at the back over there which I can do some something really nice with in post and just twist twist the camera around a little bit so that's pretty much on a third and wow what what a shot so yeah so two second time on it I haven't got the the cam uh, camera release out now a few minutes ago this was picking up a bit of light as well and uh, obviously everything's moved so it's not doing that now so I might try to relight this a little bit with um uh, with some LEDs but oh there's a bit more light there now I'll go for that Two second time is a nuisance now when you're trying to capture light and uh, two seconds on it. I might put the the thing on it, the uh, the cable release or the shutter release, but I'm, ah, oh, just, wow, 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 wow. Um, tell me what you think of these. Now these fly agaric mushrooms are wonderful things to look at, but they grow very, very quickly. This next shot is the same two mushrooms just four days later. You see how they've changed. And it really emphasizes just how important it is to get out there regularly. Otherwise you'll just miss these things.